What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to this episode of Custom with Vic. For today's project, we got a special one. Today we're gonna to be building one of my favorite shoes of all time, the 1985 Bread Jordan 1 colorway. But for this one, we're gonna to need to bring out my good friend Max. If you guys don't know who Max is, he is a master when it comes to building 1985 Jordan 1s. He's built Shadows, Chicago's, Metallics, and so many more. They've all came out incredibly beautiful. We're not only gonna make a Jordan 1, we're gonna replicate the original 1985 Jordan 1 version. That means the shape's gotta be on point, the material's gotta be as close as possible to the original, and we have to build it in the same vein. This is gonna be a heavy duty project, so a lot of prep is gonna be required before Max flies in. First things first, we gotta pick up our leather. For this, we're gonna need some Veget Tan 4 to 5 ounce leather from Tandy's. It's the perfect stuff, it has a nice smooth finish. This is what Max uses for all his 1985 Jordan 1 builds. Let's head over there now. All right, we made it to Tandy's. I love the fresh smell of leather. Today I'm looking for one thing and that's Veget Tan leather, but I feel like a kid at the candy store, so I'm gonna see what else I can find. This Oakley Vegetan leather is perfect. It's a good quality four to five ounce stuff. It's gonna be perfect for the laser engraving process. We're also gonna need two more things. Some skiving tools for this project. We're back from shopping. Big shout out to Tannies for helping us find everything we needed for this project. I dropped off the roll of leather with our graphic designer Christian. He's getting it ready for the laser engraving process. While we were out, we stopped by the fabric store to pick up some materials for the insides and tongues. We matched the materials as close as possible to the original 1985 Jordan 1. Starting with the white mesh. This is for the back of the tongues. I'm happy with this because this is really close. Next, we got our black satin material. This stuff I'm stoked for. This is the material for the sock liner and it's really close to the original. And lastly, we got our canvas material. This is for the inside, such as the backings of the vamp and quarter panels. Now, let's head over to the laser engraving room with Christian to print out all the parts for this Jordan 1 build. Christian went ahead and spent a lot of time on this project to get it ready for the laser engraving process. I even asked him to provide stitch marks throughout every single part. That way, when me and Max go in and stitch the project together, it's clean and precise all around. I do want to mention that we are using Max's patterns. Over the last year, he has spent a lot of time perfecting it. He's broken down several 85s to achieve the best and most accurate 1985 Jordan 1 pattern out there. Again, we are using Vegetan leather for this project, and I gotta say, this is the best stuff I've used on the laser engraving machine. It's thick and such great quality. This is the closest leather that I know of that replicates the 85s. There's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. As you can see, we're printing out the vamps, quarter panels, heels, collars, swooshes, etc. It's critical to get these parts cut out perfectly in order to set us up for success throughout the rest of the project. We are back from laser engraving all these parts, you guys. Christian did an amazing job with every single part. As you can see, everything is on point, nice and sharp, way better than I would have done using some scissors. Over here, we have two different parts. This side over here is gonna require red paint. This side over here is gonna require black paint. We're gonna start off with the black. Once that's good to go, we'll move on to the red. We still have to mix that paint up to get it as close as possible to the red on the actual 85. One thing I also laser engraved were some vinyl swooshes. This material is pretty close to the actual vinyl they use on the swooshes on the 85s. Let's go ahead and lay down our paint using our airbrush. Finally, after a couple hours, you guys, I got the red paint down. This literally took forever. It was really hard to mix and match the perfect color on these original 85s. The original red on this shoe is a bit faded in some areas, scuffed up. On the toe box, it's a lot darker red compared to the back. On the back, it's a bit more vibrant. Ultimately, I picked the best red from the shoe, and that's this red right here. For the color mix, I used all these colors. It's a bunch, it's not very organized. I used transparent red, bright red. Uh, fire red, black, brown, raspberry, white, all these colors from Jacquard. I was just kind of throwing colors in this jar. I wasted a lot of paint throughout this process, but eventually I got the perfect red. Now let's lay down our paint again using our airbrush. Mm -hmm. 
Yo, look what just came in the mail, you guys. A special delivery from Fox Shot Uniform. He also sent over this perfect Yo Fox bread box for these custom Jordan ones. Let's go ahead and pop it open. It was sent over a letter. Let's go ahead and read it. Yo Vic and Max, so pumped about your collaboration. Both of you guys are pivotal to the community and we are always looking to support custom culture. We hope that these accessories will contribute and help to your project. Love, Fox. Fox, this is awesome, man. I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and check out what's inside. First box, we got our black laces. We got solid black, fadeaway black, and fadeaway oxide. Really cool. Then we got our red laces. Solid red, fadeaway red, and fadeaway curry. This is really cool because it gives me the option for whatever look I want to go with with these customs. Last box, we got our Fox Union red and black laces, cream and sale stainers, and a bunch of Nike labels for this project and future ones as well. These laces are key for this project. The thread count, the weave pattern, and the colors are all on point. The details really matter. Thanks again, Fox. This project wouldn't be possible without you. Paint job is good to go. The red and black parts are fully painted. They turn out awesome. Off camera, I went ahead and prepped our Jordan 1 donors. These are the perfect donors. I got them off a pair of Ace of Spade Jordan 1 lows. As that cream tint to the outsoles, these are gonna be perfect for the 85 Jordan 1 build. Like I said, you guys, we got every single part to this Jordan 1 build ready to go. Our secret weapon has finally landed. The 1985 Jordan 1 expert, Max. What's up, everybody? Thank you, Vic, for having me. Of course, man. It's a pleasure to be here. I can't wait to get this project started. It's been a long time coming, man. This project's gonna be so sick. For sure. I remember we actually met at SneakerCon in New York City back in 2017. Yeah, I think I, I remember the event itself. I don't remember meeting you there though, Max. Yeah, no, I remember coming up to you at the Rejuvenator table and asking you about some advice on a paint job. What's crazy to me is now you're asking me for advice on how to make a shoe, so how the tables have turned. Full circle, you guys. Like Max said, he met me back in 2017. I honestly don't remember that. We move forward to 2021. He's actually showing me how to build an 85 Jordan 1. I think that's super sick. This is probably gonna be the sickest project we've ever done here on the Rejuvenator channel. I'm ready for this. You ready, Max? Let's go. Let's do this. To continue the prep work, we're gonna have to skive certain parts of the leather. That's right, if you guys don't know what skiving is, certain areas of the leather needs it, because once you start stacking certain parts of the shoe, it's gonna get bulky. For this part, we're gonna be using a skiving tool from Tannies. Skiving is complete, we put those parts to the side, we'll come back to those in just a bit. Right now, we gotta focus on the collars. The collars are very unique on the 85 Jordan 1s. For this part, we gotta replicate this as close as possible to the original, because we gotta sell that look. Max has a special process for this part. How are we gonna go about this? So, if you notice that on 85s, the collars sometimes crack, and it varies depending on factory. So, some factories where these were produced back in the day, have a like faux leather kind of look, and other ones seem like a fabric that's just been painted on. That's right, like Mac was saying, all these colors crack differently. It really depends where the shoe was made. There's different factories. How many factories is there? I believe there are about four to five original factories. All in the same country? Yes, made in Korea. So which factory was this Chicago made in? This one was made in TH, and you can see that at the end of the size stamp. Right here in the sock liner, right? Mm -hmm. And then this pair was TY1. That makes sense. It's overall the same shoe, but not really. The colors are a bit different on the Chicago's. It looks more like the paint is fading, as to where this one, the paint is kind of cracking. What are we trying to do here? Are we trying to replicate this look? Yeah, we're trying to replicate the overall cracking and kind of underlay of fuzzy material. So what does that process look like? It looks like taking some sweatpants using the reverse side, dyeing this with some coffee to create that tan look, and then spraying it with Rejuvenator water repellent spray, and then finishing it off with some matte black paint. All right, let's brew some coffee. While we let the coffee sit, let's take a look at these 85s. So, on the inside, we have a cotton liner on the lateral and medial side, as well as the vamp. So I'll be recreating this by using heat and bond, some fabric, and we'll fuse that to the back of this leather. Nice. While he does that, I'm gonna move on to the vamps. Off camera, I went ahead and punched the holes using a hole puncher. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the second vamp.
While Max is finishing that up, I'm gonna go to the sink and rinse the collars out. For this part of the process, Vic will be sitting on the sidelines while I show a highly requested part, which is building the Air Jordan 1 tongue from scratch. What the tongue consists of is front fabric, back fabric, and foam, pretty much sandwiched together and then a binding along the edges. I got all these materials for the tongue at my local fabric store, and what I did was basically take an original and compared the tongue to all these different fabrics that best resembled the original look. I started off with this front fabric, and it's some kind of nylon. I don't quite know the name of all these materials, but my best advice is to take them up to your shoe and see if they actually feel the same. Right here I have the back. As a fusible side, I have this foam that I've found is the best to use on tongues, personally. And here's the front. And lastly, we have these custom Nike Air Tags from Foxtrot Uniform. To begin this process, I'll be using Pelon double-sided fusible foam. This is my personal preference of foam because I get to choose my desired thickness of the tongue. It has fusible sides, which I can bind together with an iron. I'll start by stacking three layers together. So I have a front side, a middle portion, and a back side. I'll begin by taking the back material and using that on one piece of foam. It's important to make sure you take a look at the direction of the weave so that the tongue has its lines going vertically. Make sure that the surface is clean on both sides because you don't want any lint getting caught in between. Make sure your setting on your iron is at a low setting so you don't melt the fabric and you just iron right over. And as you see, it is bound together. Now we'll go on to the front side. So now that we have our back, our front, our middle section, we will begin by taking the back with the middle, fusing this, the iron. Ideally, it's probably most effective if you had a solid piece of foam that was the correct thickness, but this is just how I did it and have been continuing to make them. Now I'll be taking the pattern and tracing it. I'll do that on the back. And now we'll head over to the sewing machine to sew around these edges, which will make it easier for us to cut. One more thing I forgot is to make the binding. We'll be using heat and bond once more. We're gonna create strips that go around the sneaker. I use this clear ruler to make the strips. I begin with just tracing the length of the binding. So the binding measures roughly about 20 inches or 51 centimeters with some extra allowance at the end, just to be safe. So I'll mark this. Then I will draw a line down the middle. So each one is one inch wide. Now we'll take the same material used for the front of the tongue and create the binding. What I've learned is this fabric isn't that stretchy if you pull it at 90 degrees anyway, but if you have it at 45 degree angle like this, it stretches just enough to wrap around the corners and hard to bend areas without getting a bunch of creases. So diagonally across, we'll fuse the heat and bond to the fabric this helps cut the fabric in a straight line and create any unwanted warping. For this, I will only be using one binding, so I'll cut this right down the middle. Well, now on the binding, there's no raw edges, and that's achieved by folding these raw edges in towards the middle. Fold inwards all the way down and fuse everything together. So now I'll take the edge off one, peel it back, only peel one at side, right in the crease we just created. We'll take the outer edge, put it right towards the middle, and you just press a little bit and it holds itself down. Not strong, but just enough to go down the middle. Make sure everything is even as you're going. I like to inch my way up by pressing. Once that's done, move to the other side and repeat the same steps. Now everything's pressed, we're going to fuse it down. And just like that, we have our binding. As you can see, the binding has some stretch to it, like that, which will help us when we go around the edges on the tongue. So let's head back over.
Just got back from making these tongues. <laughs> Off camera, I went ahead and added these eyelet lace holders for the tongue. I used an X-Acto knife and just poked two slits all the way through. And now we're gonna attach this to the vamp as well as the liner all in one to complete the first half of the sneaker. While that finishes the vamp, I'll be adding these faux stitches to the ends of the collars. 85s were constructed just like this to eliminate any excess intrusive stitch lines to the inside liner. Well, I went ahead and also hammered the threads, and what that does is pretty much close the holes that you made with the needle and create a very flat and smooth finish. And what's next is to add the Wings logo, and we'll do so by screen printing. For those of you who don't know what screen printing is, here's a brief rundown of what it is. Right here, I have a frame that has mesh stretched onto the back. Then I coat this with a light sensitive emulsion. Then I print out my design on a transparent sheet of film. You add that on top. You expose this to light for a certain amount of time. And then once it's cured, you remove your design, wash it out. And this becomes water resistant and your design washes out, allowing you to print anything and pass ink through with a squeegee. Now I'm curing the ink with a heat gun and embossing the print with a ballpoint stylus. We're back in action. While Max was working on the tongues and the collars, I was off camera working on all the black parts. On all the edges, I hit it up with some gray sand paint from Angelus. It makes a huge difference. It actually looks identical to the actual 85 bread. I'm really happy with how this looks. Now what's next? What's next is to continue the collars. And so we've received them from the coffee staining and we're gonna be backing them with cotton using heat and bond once again. Before we do that, we also sprayed it with some rejuvenated water and stain repellent, because after we paint it, it's gonna achieve that look that we want, like the original 85s. Good to go with that step, now we're back to the vamp and toe tip. We're kind of all over the place with this project, we're just trying to be as efficient as possible to get it done. What's next? What's next is to glue the toe tip to the mud guard using barge cement, and we do this because this is at a wider angle than how we want it to be stuck onto the vamp. We need to make sure it's all set before we sew. The main reason it's a lot wider than the actual vamp itself is to give it that proper shape that we're looking for once it's all fully done. We'll start by taking the pattern and using some guides to mark where the placement is going to be. I'll be using this little metal ballpoint stylus. You can use a pen, anything that won't be too visible. In order to create proper adhesion, we'll be using an X-Acto knife. You can use sandpaper, anything that will scuff up the surface. Now, we'll take this and kind of bend it in the shape we want the toe box to look like. So we're going for a very rounded toe box. This pair of 85s has a little bit of a, a peak right here, I guess you could say. Yep. And what we're just trying to do is create this, but without that peak, so more even. I'm gonna like line this piece up, line this piece up. You can kind of see how it will work by just bending this and then we'll glue that. Do you apply glue to both parts or just the toe Correctly, tip? Correctly, both parts. I like to glue the entire edge here and then just the edges, but this whole part, just so it doesn't shift when you apply it. And after it's sewn and everything, I like to separate it because when you glue two pieces of leather together, it kind of stiffens it. Yeah. It makes it feel much nicer. This is the trickiest part, in my opinion. Because the shape that you have to shape achieve. it while it's kind of, you make contact and it sticks instantly. Happy? Yeah, I think we're growing with this. Cool. All done with the toes. They came out great. Pretty identical to the actual 85. Now what are we on to next, Max? 
We're going to be working on the quarter panels and we start by gluing the swoosh down before we sew. And to position this correctly, I like to take the eyelets and the forefront stabilizer panels and temporarily glue them and use those as guides for the placement of the swoosh. My pattern calls for seven millimeters from the edge where the swoosh goes on the back here. We'll use the heel panel to kind of create the next guide. So this is the center, this is where it lines up. Kind of take my fingernail, do a little bit of a marking, a, marking, a little bit rough. And we know that this kind of overlaps the seam allowance or just where the thread, just Barely. at where it hits the stitching. Yeah, the distance from here to here. Two, two, two. Right here, seven, eight. Switches are in place. Before we could go in and sew it, we still gotta take care of the heel. But before that, what do we gotta do? We gotta make the heel counter. And I like to use Tupperware or any kind of sturdy plastic. This part's very important, you guys. It's what gives it the back piece its shape and its sturdiness. I'm pretty sure 85s didn't have Tupperware, but I found that it is the right rigidness that replicates that. That's pretty much all this project is. None of these materials are actual materials that they use on the actual 85 Jordan 1s. We're just doing our best here to replicate what was actually used on these shoes. Max is killing it over there on the sewing machine. While he does that, I'm gonna take care of the heel counter. We'll be using 60 grit sandpaper to roughen up the material. We'll be doing it on both sides so it adheres properly to the material. Now that the swooshes are sewn to the quarter panels, Vic here is hand sewing them together. And meanwhile, I'll be taking the heel counter and gluing it down to the heel. Next step is to take this heel piece and glue it down to the quarters. We're only gonna glue one side and leave this top piece unbothered. Now we have this glued down and we're gonna go stitch right across here. And then after we stitch across, we're gonna glue the other side and fold it down. Heel tabs in place. What Max is about to do right now, he's about to stick the heel onto the upper part so we can get it ready to sew it up. Now we're back to the collars. For this part, we're gonna lay down some black paint. After you. <laughs> We're gonna be using some black Angelus paint mixed with some Too Hard. It's about a 50-50 ratio, and we'll be applying it using some angular brushes. Now sewing the heel to the quarters. Here I'm tracing the sides of the first collar on a semi-flexible fiberglass stabilizer. The shape I'm cutting them out to is based on the stabilizers found inside 85s, which covers the top eyelets and the ankle flex notches. Check this out, we're making some really good progress. These collars are all done. They came out really good, you guys. I'm excited for it. What do you think, Max? I think they turned out great, even though at the start, they didn't really look up to how we wanted them to, and I went ahead and sanded some stuff and it happened to look just perfect for So much better. Before Max sanded it down, it was really shiny, super rough. After the sanding job, it made it look a lot better, really close to the actual 85 Jordan 1. We also went ahead and added some reinforcement material on the inside to make it a bit more firm. Some canvas material on the original 85 Jordan 1s that I took apart a long time ago. This was on the inside. It's a you know, a stabilizer to keep this hair up nice and firm. We went ahead and replicated that using some stabilizer material. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and sew this up together. Or, I'll take care of it and get some food.
This bottom piece is completely done. Same thing with the top piece. Now it's time to put these together. Off camera, we went ahead and added this line. It's very hard to tell from this angle, but the line goes right across the swoosh and up. We're gonna apply that stitching once we apply the sock liner. Right now we're gonna focus on attaching these two pieces on the machine. This is looking really great. All the stitch lines are on point. We're pretty much almost done with the first shoe. Now we gotta move on to the sock liner. So for the sock liner, we have to make it with the Pellon foam that we use for the tongue, and then bind it with this moisture wickening peak fabric. Not Something too sure. Like that. But this is a very close match to the actual deal. We were stoked when we found this on the internet. We ordered several different types of fabrics. Ultimately, this was the closest one to the actual 85s. What's next in this process? What's next is we're going to take the uppers and just cut out the foam to the correct size, and then we'll iron this onto the foam. Make sure it's steady so you can clip or tape, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I first do a salt, like as best of a like, line right across the top. Mm -hmm. And then I cut this out, this foam piece. Then I'll fold these back. It's all flat. We then start sewing everything. I like to like put my hand in, give that shape, because that curve will actually switch the dimensions up. Hold it right there and then stitch along. And at the end, you'll notice it's literally like that. And so when you go to do it like that, there's no like excess wrinkles in the space. Crazy. We're done for the most part with the sock liners. Max went ahead and screen printed the size tag on the side, came out really clean. Now we're on to adding the foam and adding some more stitching. What do we gotta do for this? So basically we have to complete this stitch and we'll do so by folding this back and then completing the last stitch there. After that, we take our foam, which is the same foam, just double stacked, and we'll just spray glue this right here, and then flip it back, and we should be good. Yep, just so the stitch line's right here on the sides, right? Oh, correct, and so this stitch line will go into the liner, and we'll then we'll trim the excess foam. And that'll be it for that part. Quick tip is if we're to just sew the liner, lock it in place to the uppers here flat, and then go to bend it, you'd kind of end up with a lot of creases inside. So to avoid that, I like to bend it first and push back the liner as far as possible, and then hold where that seam goes, and then sew it on. And that kind of reduces the amount of bends and creases on the inside. All right, so now we have the liners locked down to the uppers. We trimmed the excess here. And what is next is to add these eyelet panels on the edges. We're gonna glue them down and then sew them. And after that's done, we'll take the four foot stabilizer panel and sew that down. After that, we'll take this last piece and glue it and make a little square seam right here to lock that down. We'll punch some holes after that and we can begin and I can the front precisely This is fun with this machine. Continuing details on the insoles. Make sure to cure the ink so it doesn't rub off during wear. We are basically done with the uppers. Check this out. These look so, so good compared to the original 85s. 
Big shout out to Max. Max has been doing the majority of the work on this shoe. I've just been sitting back and watching and understanding how this process is done. It's truly fascinating on how it's fully built together. I'm stoked. What's next? What's next is we need to punch the eyelets. And then once that's happened, we can then move on to connecting this piece with a zigzag stitch. We'll do that by hand right here. And then once that's complete, we fold this down, probably glue it so it st stays in place, and we'll make a seam right here and right there. And then we're on to the last thing. Yep. Good to go with the holes. We're getting a lot closer to completing this custom. Now it's time to connect this piece with this piece. On the original 85 Jordan 1s, right here we have a Jordan 85 Royal that we took apart a long time ago. On this 85 Vam, just like the one we created, it has a V right here. We went ahead and stitched it using a zigzag method. On the sides, it's gonna require that exact same method to put it together. We're trying to make this build as close as possible to the actual 85 Jordan 1. The newer retros that are built nowadays aren't built like the 85s, isn't that right, Max? That is right, and they use a lot less material. For instance, the vamp extends all the way down and it's pretty much a double layer of leather. And on the retros, it kind of just ends right there at yep. the stitch. And they don't really do the, exact, the zigzag stitching, right? No, so the whole construction and build, the way it's attached and everything is completely different. That's right, so again, with this custom, we wanna make it as close as possible to the actual 85 Jordan 1. So for this step, we'll be using some thread and a needle, and simply we're just gonna hand sew it together. One thing worth mentioning, Vic, is when we're attaching these two panels, you can see that the 85 is designed to have this little slit right here which allows this panel to be folded back, exposing this little piece, which can be stitched right there. That makes sense. And then once we're done, we just fold it down, complete the stitch, and we're off to the next step. Finally, after a long process, we got the uppers fully built. These look so awesome. Now it's time to give it its shape before you apply the soles. For this, we gotta start the lasting process. We got our exciter last, our lasting board made out of veg tan leather. We're gonna nail it down to the last, grab our upper, place it on the last, and simply start wrapping it around, nailing it down to give it its shape. Since I'm self-taught, far from any pro, my best advice for lasting is to really take your time. Measure everything from the height you want the toe to be to the distance of how much the outsoles cups the uppers. I typically start by centering the heel, putting a nail in, then the toe, then making my way back, creating small pleats along the way, ensuring that both sides are completely even. After the nails are in place, I lather everything with contact cement and hammer it down. Remove the nails after you let the glue cure and follow that with skiving. The lasting process is complete, you guys. This shape looks awesome. Now the last thing we gotta do is apply it onto the sole. We're gonna apply some glue and then bond them together. Wow, I can't believe it. After two and a half days, we finally got these custom 85 Jordan 1 breads completely done. Max, this was a lot of work, man. Indeed. Usually Max takes about a week and a half on these projects when he's working on them alone. We crammed that week and a half into a two and a half day project. A lot of work. I probably wouldn't do this again, huh, Max? Not in two days, no. <laughs> these came out really, really, really sweet though. I'm just, I can't stop looking at them. So many details to look at. Now it's time to compare the custom 85 bread to the original 85s. Starting off with the edges, you did a great job here, Vic, with comparing the Tones, it's just spot on. I feel like it's those small details that really sell that feeling of capturing an 85. It's definitely one of my favorite details from the shoe. It just makes the 
shoe pop a bit more. Like you mentioned in the past, building a Jordan 1 is pretty easy, but giving it that 85 feel, that's a different story. Exactly. You know, the shape, the edges, the materials we went with, all the details really matter on the shoe, you guys. The way it was built, the materials we used, every single little detail, isn't that right? Precisely, we even went down and did the same bobbin threads on the inside and the overall construction. We did more work than needed for something that's not really gonna show on the inside, honestly, but again, we wanted to replicate this shoe as close as possible to the 1985 Jordan 1. This project was so much fun, learned so many different new things, and most importantly, I got myself a brand new pair of custom 85 Jordan 1s. Max, this was an honor. Thank you so much for coming out, man. Thanks, Vic, for having me. It's been a pleasure to be on the channel. I can't wait to see you rock these and beat them up. Me too, man. Just hope they don't fall apart on you. They won't. I helped build them. For sure, and thank you to Connor, the camera guy. He's been great here. It wouldn't be possible without him. Now I got a flight to catch, so. That's right. Till next time, Max. All right, peace. Catch you guys later.